Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kayleigh Allen and welcome to this week's video. Now, two things about this video. Number one, I'd like to thank the sponsors for this video today, Squarespace. The second thing is, this is a video that has been planned for a while and as you can tell from the title, it should have probably happened about a month ago, but it hasn't. So we're doing it now. We're doing it now, okay? We're doing it now. Yes, yeah, so as you can see from the title, this video is about goth plants, and I'm essentially just ranking them and telling you what I think of them. Is this every goth plant? No, but I feel like it's a lot of the very obvious ones. Now, the thing is, I know I've just told you that this video was planned a while ago, and it was. I set up this tier maker screen that you see before you with all the images and everything in. I did that a long time ago. I might have even done that in about July, maybe, maybe before, and I've forgotten the names of some of the plants in it. Now, I can give it a damn good guess, but I don't actually know every single plant, so this is going to be very, very interesting. So if you have no idea what this video is about, as you can see in front of us, right here with the powers, the magical powers of green screen, we have a bit of a chart going on. And essentially, this chart is ranked from crap to great. So at the bottom, we have for the drone. Fans of the channel will know exactly what this means. It basically means cut it up and throw it in the bin. In some respects, that's what that means. So obviously, any plants going into there are not so good. In my opinion. In my opinion, oh my god, these videos get me in so much trouble. This is just my opinion, guys. We're talking about plants. So anyway, the category up from that is let's test shipping delays, which refers to a time on this channel where I had, did I have 69686s, philodendrons, that I wanted to test shipping to certain countries to test the waters and make sure shipping was fine. I picked a few of you guys to just send you some philodendrons for free. But the philodendrons themselves, they were basically cannon fodder because they don't grow very well. For me personally, they are a nightmare. Some people disagree with that. That's just what I think. That's just what I found. The middle of the road category is Yes Boy. This is just, yeah, good solid plant. Nothing good to say necessarily. Nothing bad to say at all though. Just middle of the road. The category up from that needs no real explanation. That is iconic. So it's pretty, pretty good. Is it the best? No, but it's really quite far up there. And obviously the last category literally, says sexually attracted. The reasons for this, and this has upset quite a few people in its time, it's just because when I find a plant that I really, really, really like, I refer to it as being sexy. So that's kind of what that is. And again, so many people have been offended by that in the past. Without further ado, let's get into it. It is so hot in here, guys, I can't even tell you. In no particular order, these are some goth plants that I would like to discuss. We're going to start off with this one. I'm just going to pop it middle of the road until we have a conversation about it. I actually don't know what type of oxalis it is, but it is oxalis. Now, I don't think, and you, you have to forgive me, guys, I've never owned one. I've never even seen one in real life. I don't think these leaves do anything, do they? I don't think they open and close or anything. I think that is just how they are. I might be wrong. They might open up, but they essentially look a lot like butterflies. This one here is what I'm just going to call a dark form. It might have a proper name. I don't know. I made this months ago. I'm sorry. They do do a light form as well, like a normal green form. And I think it has dark stripes on the, on the leaves. The best way I can describe it is it looks like a lot of butterflies. It looks like a cluster of butterflies just sort of frozen in time. It's a really, really nice plant. I can't speak to its care because I, as I say, I've, I've barely even encountered it before. They are quite nice. I wouldn't say they're amazing. Would I have one? Maybe. So I'm actually going to keep it where it is because I think that's actually quite a good place to keep that one. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that actually. Right, next. Oh, okay. The next one here we have, I believe, is the Alocasia Amazonica. Now, <sighs> I recommend this alocasia because I haven't had it myself, by the way. I haven't owned this plant myself, but it's in a lot of garden centers, which tells you it's mass produced, which tells you it's sort of easy-ish to look after. Because at the end of the day, guys, if these things weren't super easy and super hardy, they would not be even surviving in a garden center long enough for us to take it home. We all know what garden centers can be like. Not all of them. Certainly big box stores can just be horrific. So we already know it's a bit easy, right? I don't really like the plant itself. I don't know why. I just... I've never really liked it. I acknowledge that it's a really good goth plant, but I don't really like the plant. And to be honest, I'm probably going to put it here and that's probably going to upset a few people, but I've just, I don't know what it is. I just prefer the more jungly green, less shield looking allocation, more of like dinner plates on sticks, if you know what I mean. I prefer those a little bit more. That's where I'm going to put that. Let me know if you think differently to that. I would love to know people's opinions on this plant because as I say, it is everywhere. And I think nearly everyone that's owned allocation has probably had one of these before at some point in time. So I'd be really, really curious to know what you think of that. 
I'm just going to be honest, I've never really liked it. I do recommend it because it's easy and if it dies on you because allocation aren't the easiest, then it's no love lost, but I don't like them. Oh, next plant, next plant. Let us do this one. I'm going to drop it into the middle again while we talk about it. This is basically Philodendron Dark Lord. Now, I do actually really like these plants and I have always said they, in terms of their hardiness, they have a really good chance of making it to a garden centre. Now, I, I do like these plants. As you can see from the back of that one, they have some really, really nice red, sort of like a deep burgundy backed leaf. They can be very, very pointy and ominous looking. They are a climber, but the space between the, the nodes on the plant in my experience is quite large. You can obviously grow it a bit more on the compact side, but as far as climbers go, I would say it was it was stretchier than that. So if you're looking for something more compact, then this probably isn't the one for you if you don't want that kind of climber, I guess, because you absolutely need a pole for these. They will just go. They do grow really quickly though. They propagate really well. I've never really had an issue with these to the point where I can't get rid of them because I have so many, they just don't die. And when I say they don't die, I mean, I can like not water them for a hell of a long time in lacquer and they're still fine. So that's kind of mental. I've gone off them a little bit and that's just because I've, I see them all the time, guys. They're kind of like weeds for me now, actually. I still love the plant, don't get me wrong, but they're kind of like weeds for me now. So, oh, what should I do with it? I'm going to keep it where it is because I think it's a solid goth plant and it won't let you down. If you want to cut it and give it to friends or whatever, or you just want to grow it yourself, it won't let you down. So I'm going to keep it there. Let's do this guy here. This guy, I do believe, is Anthurium mudinum. Can't be certain. Do not have the names with me at all. I just have pictures. But it looks to me like Anthurium mudinum. Now, I think these are absolutely incredible. Like, really incredible. So I'm just going to not waste any time, and I'm going to put them straight into Iconic. It's borderline sexual attraction, but I like to use that category for the stuff that really gets me, like, hot under the collar. And I wouldn't say this gets me hot under the collar, but... I do actually think it's really, really iconic. Have a look at pictures of it online and see what you think. But it's quite a tough anthurium, so I really like that. I definitely really like that. Let's keep it in iconic. Oh, this one, I know what this is. This plant here is Colocasia Black Magic, and I actually got this... Was it last year for my birthday, or was it just for a present? I think it was this year, maybe, and it was just for a present. Ben basically got me one, and... It got slightly neglected because it was in a plug. Didn't have time to take it out of the plug. I left it to acclimate and then it dried out and then it was in front of the living wall and then it got blasted anyway. And it just sort of died. And it, it is my fault, guys. I could have very easily prevented it and it died. So I can't really tell you anything about them. I know that the black color, you're going to have to give it some light, I think is what I've been told. They don't just stay black. It's not like this leaf comes out black. Like, for example, the oxalis we talked about. It's going to be... It, it's going to develop, so I think you need to keep good conditions for that. Do they grow well? I'm pretty sure they do. It's a colocasia. You've either got a knack for them or you don't. Colocasia can pretty much grow in water, by the way. So if you're an overwaterer, you might love this plant. Or any type of colocasia, which actually, on the topic, I do have a colocasia rare plant index that I will link for you down below which is pretty awesome if you like the idea of a colocasia because they are a bit easier than alocasia in my opinion and you want to see all the colors and varieties and everything. I will leave that video down for you below because it's, it's a good one. As far as to where it is, I'm going to keep it where it is actually because I don't know enough. So I don't want to say that it's crap. I don't want to say it's great because personally I have not had the experience. So I'm going to leave it there. If you're looking for a convenient way to create and run your own website, then Squarespace could be exactly what you're looking for. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up, using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's super easy to make changes to one of these templates and make it your own. I can quickly create a new website, choose a template that I like, and get started making edits. Once I'm done with everything and I hit save, my dashboard shows the second website, so now I can simply switch between the two websites whenever I want to change what I'm working on. No need to make multiple accounts. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me. Back to the video. Right, let's grab this guy. I can't remember the name of this plant, but I think it's a sweet potato vine. And I think it's something like, is it Ipomia? 
something or other. I can't remember, but I think if you Google like sweet potato vine, you'll get it. And honestly, I think this is actually great. And I think it's great because it is insanely affordable. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's insanely affordable. It's not a rare plant. It's nothing like that. It's a bit like coleus type thing. And I think it's great. And I would actually have one in the house and just put it in a random corner and forget about it. I actually really like this and I'm, I almost want to stick it in Iconic because of its affordability and you can get some really cool looking for not a lot. Now, if I've got this wrong and if the black coloring on it is a, you know, a light thing or a heat thing or whatever, let me know because I don't know anything about the plant. I should have really asked Pam. I feel like this is a plant that Pam's Pretty Plants would know and love. So... If you're out there, Pam, let me know because I, I don't know anything about this plant, but I do love it. And I would actually have one, you know. I don't suppose I can grow that outside in the UK. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if I could, I probably would. But yeah, I'm going to leave that there because I actually quite like it. Oh, next up, next up. Okay, we'll go with this absolute classic. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to put it in Iconic. This is Anthurium Warraquinum Dark Form. So it's a Queen Anthurium that is, well, dark. You can get lighter versions. At one point, if anyone remembers that far back, in about 2019, maybe even 2018, a dark form Anthurium, Queen Anthurium, was nigh on impossible to get. Does anyone remember that? Now, it's almost the other way around. The dark form has been so widely spread, the lighter version, you can't get it very often. I'm not sure. I feel like the one that's been on my wall is a lighter form, but honestly, most of my other plants are dark form. But I'm going to leave it there because obviously it's iconic. It's Queen Anthurium. It's not easy, but it's a good plant and I really want to leave it there. Ooh, okay, this one here is Zamiculus. I can't speak with my Invisalign name. Zamiculus Zamifolia, also known as the ZZ plant, but this is the ZZ Raven, so it's like a black version. And I think I'm going to put it straight into Iconic. I haven't owned one, but I would. And I'm, I'm almost debating it actually for a darker corner of my house. Like my whole house decor is like natural woods, it's really fresh and stuff like that. And there's some really small black accents throughout the house. So I think the ZZ would actually look really, really good. And I think it would sit in a self-watering pot and dry out quite well. Even though it is a misconception, by the way, that they don't need any water at all. They, yes, they are more on the succulent side, but I do think people take that too far sometimes. But I'm going to leave it there because I, I actually think that that's a really good plant for most people. And this is quite affordable now. There was a situation, I think, I think it was before 2020, where this was hard to get hold of and it, it was quite expensive. But if you see this out, Honestly, get it. It's, I don't think it's going to give you any trouble. I'm pretty sure it's the same as the green version. And I've had the green version before. So let me know if you have one of these and if you're still in love with it. Because I'm genuinely debating one, actually. Maybe I'll just put it in the bathroom and it can just live off the air in the bathroom. Who knows? So this is quite shameful of me. But here's a begonia. I uh, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what it is, guys. I just don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It could be begonia black something or other. I don't know. Any begonia lovers, feel free to identify that for me in the comments and make me look a little bit less stupid, but it is a begonia and it is black. <sighs> My opinion on begonia is kind of widely known. I don't love them. I have occasionally seen a lot of uh, angel wing type begonia that I've really liked. So it's not actually a plant that I wouldn't try anymore. I think... I said it a long time ago and I'm kind of, I'm not overturning my decision, but I think I could try a couple of them depending on what they are. I'm not in a rush to do it. So I'd, I think this is a situation where I'd have to see the plant in person and then be like, oh, I'm going to try that. But for now, eh, I don't want to be harsh about it and say, let's test shipping delays because I don't, I don't really think that, to be honest. I will, for the sake of um, evening the playing field, I'm going to put it in there, but I think it could, it could become a yeah boy. I don't think it's strong enough right now for me to say yeah boy. So I think it's probably, it's probably in the right place, putting it there. Right, I've got another begonia and this is definitely nicer. This here is the begonia, I think it's Darth Vaderiana. It's amazing. It was super rare and I think it's, I want to say it's not now. I don't think they're very easy to look after though. I think these are some kind of cloche situation, you know, keep it covered, a lot of humidity. Can't be sure, never owned one. I have always fancied it though. I think when I did the begonia red plant index a long time ago now, do you think I said like, oh, this is really cool. I'd like one of these. So, so this one is actually going to go in yes, boy, because I think it's worth it to be quite honest. I think it's really nice. This next one, I don't know what it is. I think it's black cardinal, guys. We're gonna, we're just gonna assume it's philodendron black cardinal. I don't like these, you know. I just think that don't get me wrong, it's really good and it's really affordable. Or at least I think it's affordable. But I just, mm, I just don't like it. I don't hate it. It's not like a for the drone, but I don't. I don't think much of it. I'm going to put it here. I just, meh. 
I, don't, I can't even articulate why I don't like it. I think it's the growth pattern. I just think like there's petioles and then there's just these spades on the end of the petioles. It's, it's not for me. It is not for me. Right. Okay, the next plant. Depending on the size of it, I would either put it in iconic or sexually attracted. So it's this one here. This is Philodendron melanochrysum. The size of the picture I'm going to use to infer my judgment here. So from the size of the picture, I'm going to put it here because they are great plants, but they are not so good when they're small. They're a bit boring. It takes a lot to size up. However, if you can get, if you remember the documentary where I got those real, real big melanochrysums, they were literally something else. And I mean it, they were just something else. If you've actually managed to see a, same thing for a queen anthurium, don't get me wrong. If you've managed to see them in real life and they're huge, they're like shields, they are something else. So I'm on that basis, I'm going to evaluate it as sexually attracted, but I am talking about when they are really mature and they are like the size of my torso. I'm not talking about when they're small. Because when they're small, once upon a time I would have said they're iconic, I'd probably, you know, I wouldn't even put them in Yes Boy now. I'm so sick of them. I have a corner in my shop, by the way, that is full of melanochrysum and it's just, it's trailing and it's tiny and it's awful and it just got neglected and it's not very nice. So based on the size, I'm gonna pop it in there. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. This one here, this is, oh my God, I don't know what it is. It's a Calathea, it's, is it Rosio Picta? Calathea Rosio Picta? Let me have a look. I don't really wanna get Calathea wrong. Calathea were kind of like my starting point in life with plants, it was Maranta and Calathea. I wasn't into aroids initially, so we'll just have a look. Calathea. I'm gonna say yes it is. It's also been called Surprise Star now, so. I don't know. You know how growers are, they'll give you a name for anything. I love Calathea, right? I, I really, I, I love them and I definitely will be getting some in the house because I think they're just great. Plus I, I quite like Calathea because if you, if you leave them out and they get spider mites, it's a really good warning prior to your other plants getting it. So if you get one that you like, but it's affordable and it doesn't matter if it tanks and you miss it, it's quite a good gauge for that. I wouldn't say you should keep it next to your aroids or anything expensive but I think if you kept it in the same environment, so the same room, should we say, and keep an eye on it. And I actually think that's a really good thing to do. So I love Calathea, but this one, I, I cannot, I cannot deal with it, guys. I don't like it. And I am going to put it for the drone because I just think it's ugly. I'm really sorry. I know it's dark and it's pink and it's really nice, but it's just not for me at all. I think the amount of Calathea out there that are actually still dark and pretty, the um, was Wixie Eye, the Velvet Touch, oh, if you want a dark Calathea with some kind of presence to it, that's the one. It's just, oh my goodness, it's amazing. I should really do a Calathea ranking video, by the way. It's, I'm kind of getting inspired to. So actually on that note, if you want to see me rank certain plants, let me know. And I guess just write a comment like, do it for Calathea, do it for Philodendron, do it for whatever. I might do it for some different plants rather than aroids just to start, but I might actually do that. I think that could be really fun. But yeah, this one I am not about, guys. I really don't like this plant. I really don't like this plant. <sighs> this one, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the plant YouTuber that doesn't know what the plants are. Right, listen, I don't know what it is. If someone writes it down, I'll immediately spot it because I, I sort of know what it is, but I don't. I feel like it begins with L. Watch it doesn't at all and I've just embarrassed myself. Anyway, it's a nice plant. It seems nice. Um, I don't know what I think about it. I might keep it in Yes Boy. Now this used to be on my wish list, not like a major, major, oh my god, must have it wish list, but just in a like, oh, I want to see that in real life and I, I might really want that. I've seen them around different people's Instagrams and they do look quite nice. They've got lovely contrast to them, so it's good, it's not amazing. I need to see a little bit more, but it's a nice plant. Right, what do we have? This is, oh my god, I know it's a Collius. I'm so sorry. If Pam, if you're out there, literally, tell me what Collius this is, because I know she loves her Collius, and I don't know what that is. It's probably black something. Black, is it not Black Prince or something? It could be Black Prince. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I don't know. But I actually quite like this. I don't think I'd have it myself, because I'm not into Collius. However, I'm pretty sure Collius are super affordable. And I think Pam says this herself, but the thing about Collies is they are affordable, but they're also incredibly colorful. So you can have houseplants that are really colorful in your collection for a really, really, really affordable price. So I'm gonna put this into a category based on what I think of them generally, not, you know, would I have one? And I'm definitely putting it in Iconic, guys. 
because I think it's really cool when you get exotic colored plants that are very affordable because who doesn't want that? So I think for that reason, they're very, very cool. And I think they grow pretty quickly as well. They can grow a bit leggy from what I know, but can't every plant? Can't every plant. So, I mean, even succulents can be leggy, so they all suffer from it. But I'm going to put it there because it's not necessarily a plant that I would have because I think it's an indoor plant. I think you can have them in your garden, but I don't know if we can have them over here. Let me know if you know. I'm going to put it there because I do think anything that is colourful but affordable, it, it should probably be iconic, really. We have another Anthurium. And this is the Anthurium Ace of Spades. And oh my God, I had one once. I had one once. I opened my shop with an Anthurium Ace of Spades and I didn't understand how rare it was. I, I think I did sell it for a bit of extra money. I can't remember what it sold for. And I had one and it was one leaf. It was all on its own. And I wish I didn't because I've never seen one since. These are very expensive, I think. They're not cheap. What do I think of them though? That's really now and impossible to say, which is stupid because I made this video. I came up with these plants. <sighs> I'm gonna say iconic because it kind of is, right? I'm just gonna be honest, it kind of is. In terms of like the Anthurium world, Ace Spades, absolutely iconic. I can't speak to how easy it is to care for. I only had the plant about two months, I think, before I passed it on when I opened my shop. So I don't remember it being difficult. It had one leaf and it didn't die. So I don't think I was able to grow it anymore at the time. Probably could now, don't know. Um, but I'm going to put it there because I think most people would say it was iconic, but it does have a price tag. It really has a price tag. So do be careful. Right, next one. Okay, this is actually going straight in the top. This here is Philodendron Majesty. Now, this is underrated as hell, guys. It's underrated as hell. It's better than Dark Lord, hence it's right up in there. I love this plant. So this plant has really nice matte black sort of petioles. And when it grows, it almost looks coffin shaped in the leaf. It's a little bit like if you've seen Philodendron Ilmanii, it is very, very similar. And I love it for that. And the leaves are quite thick. They're almost like if anybody's been fortunate enough to feel a Spiritus Sancti leaf. Very, very leathery. You see what I'm saying? It's not your average leaf that. It's a little bit leathery. Billetai uh, and things like that are a little bit leathery, but I think Spiritus is even more leathery than that. It's just, it's just built different. The Majesty is kind of like that. So I really, really like this. And I hope you can see from the picture how awesome it is. Not enough people own it. Not enough people talk about it. Not enough people want it. So feel free to look it up online and tell me if you would even have it. But I have a couple in the shop. It's actually all the same plant. I've just chopped it up. But I have a couple of them and I really love them. I really love them. I do think they need fed well to size up and get lovely but I think they're really, really worth it. And they are quite easy. Again, it was something that was neglected at the top of a shelf and it's still alive and it's fine. So it gets my vote, but it, it's pretty sexy. I'm actually looking at these two plants. I know there are only two in here, but I'm noticing a pattern of what I find sexually attractive. And it's basically something dramatic and pointy. So there you go. Wait. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. Next up, we have uh, this guy. I'll just plop him here. This is Alocasia Copria. Now, there are so many mixed feelings on this plant, and I, I kind of get it, to be honest. So, this plant looks very alien-esque. So, if you're into sci-fi and all that sort of stuff, this might be the plant for you. This used to be hard to get. When, I think it was in 2019, people were selling these for very high double digits, I think. And now, I'm pleased to tell you that they're in garden centres. So it tells you that they're strong to a degree. They're not really waxy and thick, but they're thicker than a lot of other plants. They are like a deep purpley color. They can cast a silvery sort of tone on them as well. I think when they come out, do they come out green and hardened to that maroon color? I can't remember, you know. It's been so long since I've actually had one. I think my mum still has one up uh, where she lives, but I don't know. Now, I had one of these in, if anyone remembers, like way back when. I have actually had one of these before. So what would I say about it? I think it's so hard because I feel like I'm rating all the plants in here on like what other people think of it, but also what I think of it, but also it's a goth plant video. So I don't think it's for the drone at all. I don't think it's a bad plant. I don't think it's for less, let's test shipping delays. I don't, I think I like it more than that. I don't think it's iconic, but it's kind of like, if there was a category in between Yes Boy and iconic, it might go in there. But I think it's probably Yes Boy because it's a good solid choice. It's really weird. If you have someone that comes around your house and they don't know about houseplants and they say that, they're going to ask you some questions. 
okay, trust me, they're going to ask you some questions. <laughs> they're going to say, what is that? I like it for that, as this is a Goth Plans video. It should be quite affordable to a lot of people. A lot of the time, if you get these from garden centers, by the way, as with most alocasia, don't get me wrong, but there's nearly always more than one in the pot. So you're probably going to get more plants in one anyway. If you haven't, look around some other pots. You probably will find a couple of them that have two alocasia in, minimum. And you can pot them together and keep them looking a bit more full. But I, I do like them. I went through a period where I couldn't stand them and it's sort of come back around and I like them. I don't think it's enough for me to have one. It's not really the vibe I'm going for in the house. I think the vibe I'm generally going for in the house is just, it's got to look classy. It's got to look sexy. I don't really want it on a pole. It's got to be easy and it's got to just size up nice and just not give me a problem. It doesn't necessarily have to go quick either. It can grow quite slowly. So it's not one for my house, but I think it's a good solid option. It's borderline iconic, I think for sure. And that was my goth plant ranking video. I probably missed out a lot of plants on here, guys, but I'm pretty sure when I was making this originally, I remember not wanting to put too many obvious choices on. Now, I know I have done a couple of obvious choices, but that's just kind of, it allows me to ground the video and, and pin, you know, the opposite ends of the scale, if you know what I mean. But I've tried to not put too many obvious things on. I mean, you might look at that and go, no, literally every single one is obvious. I totally get that but that's what I've kind of gone for anyway. So let me know what you think. Is there anything in there that you just think, oh, that's just gross. What, what, how could you say that about it? Is there anything you think, how dare you say that about it? It's great. For example, this little guy at the bottom, bless him, holding the fort, tell me what you think about him. I don't like him, but you know, each to their own. Because remember guys, that this is my opinion. I'm just one girl sat with a green screen, with a laptop and an opinion. So try not to worry about it too much. And I have to say this because these videos have caused me great problems in the past. Thank you very much for watching this video. It is a different format to my usual videos, but if you really liked this one, I have some real good spicy ones that I've also done. So I will leave the links down to those below as well so you can have a little looky. They're pretty good. A lot of them are tearing down rare plants and telling you what I really, really, really think of them. So if you're interested in that, then check the description of this video and you will see some stuff. That's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like, a big thumbs up down below. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job making content you enjoy. Special thanks to our sponsor that is a long-term sponsor of the channel now, which is just unbelievable. And that is Squarespace. I love Squarespace. Literally, I use it for, as you know, the Red Plant Shop, and I also use it for my up and coming new brand for the fertilizer. So it's really awesome that they can be a long-term, well, a more long-term sponsor on the channel. Really excited about that. Feel free to check out the channel and subscribe if you are not already, and I will see you next week. Bye.